in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be it, the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Do you hear that? You either have the spirit of Christ or you don't. Now, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, you get that? The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. So you have a dead raising spirit living in you. Amen. The spirit in you has already raised the dead. He's the only one that's ever raised the dead. Nobody else has ever raised the dead. So you have the spirit that has raised every dead person ever. Do you get that? Yeah. That's what you have. That's the, the, I wouldn't even say the limits, but that is a demonstration of the spirit you have. Now, in Colossians 2, verse 9, now watch this. Here's where we start getting to where we are. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Christ, in Christ dwells all the fullness of God. Can we agree with that? Is that what it says? Okay, now watch. And you are complete in him. So in him is all the fullness. And guess where you are? You're in him. Where all the fullness is. Do you get that? See, we think of ourselves sometimes, well, I got this much, I got this much, and this, this anointing, that anointing. No, 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 no. The Spirit of God is the anointing. If you have Him, you have the anointing. The anointing is there. Guess what? The good thing, see, under the old covenant, the Spirit came upon people. It really, it only came upon the prophet, the priest, and the king. He still only comes upon the prophet, priest, and the king. And you are a prophet. You are a priest and a king. He has made us kings and priests under our God. So his spirit comes upon us. But because we're sons, Galatians chapter 3 going in verse 4, or chapter 4, actually says, and because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. Isn't that right? But notice he says, you are no longer servants, but sons. Why? Old covenant saints were servants. Yes. Listen, I'm not a servant. No. I'm a son. I'm a son who serves. Whole different mentality. You understand? If you take on a servant mentality, it's always, see, servants never look up. They're always looking down because you can't make eye contact with the one you serve. That's not who we are. We're sons. We walk right in. I got three grown children, seven grandchildren going from eight to 21 or two now. In that time, listen, when my, when my kids were younger and they came in the house, and even when they moved out, and they come to the house, they would come in the house and they would walk, talking, they'd be talking to us and walk right to the refrigerator. <laughs> they didn't walk in, hey, can I do this? Can I? No, they just walked over and they're talking and they, and they look, how come you don't have this in here? What? I didn't know you were coming. You know, <laughs> what's in there is what I like, right? <laughs> and so, but that's, but you have to understand that they didn't come in and go, Dad, Father, please, if you can, can you please give me some bread, some food? They don't do that. Why? They walk in there like they own the place. Why? Because they're a son. That's right. See, you're a son. He's given you all things that pertain to life in God. It's been given. It's just floating out there because you won't take hold of it. And because you won't take it as your own and take ownership. And when you take it as your own, it's amazing. When you take it, see, people think, oh, that sounds selfish and sounds like greed or covetousness. No, 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 no. See, the only people that think that way are the people that have never walked in the fullness of God or in the fullness of his provision. Because once he provides for you, it's amazing how generous you get. It, why? Because you realize if I empty my pockets, he'll fill them again. And it gets to be fun watching him fill them. So we just, and then you start looking for ways, looking for people, looking for places to bless. And, and you look at that and you think, this person needs help? I can do that. Why? Because you're blessed. When I give people Money on the street, a lot of times I tell them, they say, God bless you. I said, I, I, he does. That's why I can do this. Why? Because you, it, it does something in you. When you take on the nature of God, his nature is to give. If you don't, if you don't like giving, you, you don't have the nature of God. The nature of God is to give. He gives everything. He gives love. He gives all, and he does, he's not thinking in terms of what he's going to get back. It's his nature to give it. Yes, Amen. That's his nature. It was his nature to give. Yes. And so it, whenever you partake of his nature, that's going to be in you. It's just that simple. 